without much ado, we'll get right to it. I recently read the book Early Indians by Tony Joseph. I didn't want to, but I had to, considering you cannot critique without knowing it. So here are the four basic points that he tries to emphasize. Apparently, India is a pizza to him and the layers are as follows. The first people from out of Africa came at about 65,000 BC to India. Then the Iranian agriculturalists came between 7 to 3,000 BC. Then the East Asian people came and finally the Aryans at 2000 to 1000 BC. Now I'm going to show that two out of these four premises are blatantly wrong and with the new papers coming out last week, they have definitely been proven wrong. And one other point that could be doubtful too. So the first doubtful point is that the first people to come out of Africa and reach India at about 65,000 BC. Now from pre-Toba excavations, it has been found that Neolithic and Stone Age instruments were found below the ash layer from the Toba volcanic eruption. And this dates to before around 73,000 BC. So these first people out of Africa, that, that could be debated now. Now after that point has been raised, now let's move on to the points that they're definitely wrong. But first, before I start demolishing this book, let us look at the general reactions from the various people when the book came out. Or should I say, these are the contents of the marketing campaign associated with the book release. The first is a BBC article written by Tony Joseph himself. And here are a few excerpts from it. So he says that tensions between the two groups, which are basically the right wing and the left wing, backing these opposing theories have only increased in the last few years and especially since the Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party came to power in India in 2014. Somehow in writing a prehistorical book, he has to bring in this point to drive his ideology here rather. Now then he says the study showed that there were two major migrations into India in the last 10,000 years. The first one originated from the Zagros Mountains in the southwestern Iran, which has the world's first evidence for goat domestication and brought agriculturalists, mostly herders, to India. And this would have been between 7000 to 3000 BC. These Zargosian herders mixed with the earlier inhabitants of the subcontinent, the first Indians, who were the descendants of the out of Africa migrants, and together they went on to create the Harappan civilization. What's important here is, he mentions that the, the, this people, they brought agriculturalists to India between 7 and 3000 BC. Then he says, in the centuries after 2000 BC came the second set of migrants, immigrants, the Aryans, from the Euros Eurasian steppes, probably from the region now known as Kazakhstan. They likely brought with them an early version of Sanskrit mastery over horses and a range of new cultural practices such as sacrificial rituals all of which are formed all of which formed the basis of an early hindu or vedic culture right and then he ends it with a new study puts an end to these debates and it has thus come as a shock to the hindu right wing in a tweet attacking its co-author professor Reich ruling party MP and forward Harvard University professor Subramaniam Swami said, there are lies, damned lies, and Harvard's Third Reich and Coe's statistics. Now, the second article by Jay Desai appeared in The Wire, and some of its exper excerpts are, you know, uh, seldom does a book of such national importance comes out. After reading Early Indians, I googled for his background and was surprised to find that he was not a scientist or an academic, but a lifelong journalist and newspaper editor. A vast majority of books that address subjects as tedious as population genetics, archaeology and linguistics are usually written by academics. He 
you know, I'm going to give him that he was absolutely correct about this point. And it, it's good that he has pointed it out. Next, he says, in fact, this book is unique in the context of Indian history because it adds essentially indisputable evidence from population genetics to already available archaeological and linguistic proofs. And it all adds up. Then he says, migrants from the Zagros Mountains who arrived thousands of years earlier helped spread the agriculture that was a necessary precondition for it. The Harappan script has not been deciphered, but its roots lie, likely lie in the proto-Elamite language of Iran. The Harappan language was likely an early form of Dravidian languages of today's South India. Sanskrit has its roots in the Eurasian steppe and evolved in India after Indo-European language speakers who called themselves Aryans brought it here. You know, before going ahead, I just have to say they never called themselves Aryans. They called themselves Aryas. And that means, you know, people who are well-mannered, not a race. And he ends, he, he ends the article by saying, Joseph deserves our gratitude for writing a masterpiece with such clarity and lucidity, despite numerous opportunities for confusion and a flair that renders the stories of our roots exciting. If, even if not for this, every Indian should read the book at least to learn a scientific evidence can be compelling. Passages from this book needs to be incorporated into textbooks for young students. Oh my God, I can't take this anymore. Scroll out an article and uh, its excerpts are the influx of a new wave of warrior-like migrants from the Eurasian steppe might have been just the last straw that broke the system for good. The Aryans arrived around this time or a little later with a pastoralist lifestyle, new religious practices such as large sacrificial rituals, a warrior tradition and mastery over the horse and metallurgy. What we do know is that the visible disconnect between the Harappan culture as revealed by its archaeological remains and the Indo-European culture as revealed by the Vedas, starting with the earliest composition, the Rig Veda, reduces over time. The world of Rig Veda and the world that is revealed by the material culture of Harappa seem two very different universes. There are a few more articles of the similar nature which I believe are part of the marketing campaign push associated with the book release. But these three are enough for now. Now let's come to the crux of the matter. The new papers, the new scientific papers released last week, firstly by Dr. Vasant Shinde and Dr. Neeraj Rai and their team, and the second paper by Dr. Vagish Narasimhan and David Reich and their team, literally demolish all the above claims made by these so-called journalists known for having vested interests. To the papers, Adding to these papers, there is also a podcast by Dr. Neeraj Rai on the Charvaka project and the interview is available at this link. When you go through all these actual scientific resources, it becomes very clear that firstly, the Iranian related ancestry that came into India had come before 10,000 BC and had nothing to do with the Iranian agriculturalists. They were not even Iranian agriculturalists, the people who came in. And so for Tony to put it at seven to 3000 BC is rather preposterous. He got that wrong by at least 5,000 years. You know, such things happen when you're not qualified enough to pass judgments on a topic like this. There is no proof. Secondly, there's no proof of any archeological breakdown as the writer and his reviewers mentioned in his articles between the middle, late and post Harappa. In fact, at many of the IVC sites, excavation is difficult because the civilizations are still ongoing to this day. Thirdly, there is now an ample proof of an out of India migration with the Indus periphery population of the 11 individuals found at Konur and Shari Shukta during the mature Harappan period. Now I had made fun of this Indus periphery population as 
obscurist as an obscurist concept but as it turns out the, these uh, concepts of uh, periphery population is actually showing that uh, these people uh, whose remains match with this one individual from Rakhigadi show that uh, they belong to the same ancestry and these 11 individuals moved out from IVZ to the sites at Konur and Shere Shokta. Dr. Rai, fourthly, Dr. Rai clearly mentions that even if there was a movement of people from the steppes towards India, it was more of an assimilatory in nature. Those people were here to find refuge and they were helpless. And as I've mentioned in one of our earlier videos, the Harappans felt nothing but pity for the steppe people, allowed them to live with them, allowed them to marry locally and assimilated them, showing the principles of Atiti Devoha and Vasudeva Kutumbakam. IVC and South India have no relation whatsoever, fifthly, apart from trading and probably leader mixing. There was a thriving South Indian population at all times. I really don't understand why the Dravidian political parties make such a big issue out of it. To my eyes, there was always a thriving culture in South India since ancient times, since the time uh, the first batch of people out of Africa reached India. There is no reason for them to start claiming even IVC, which is so far from South India. And I have confirmed this personally from Bagish Narasimhan, that there were people living in South India during IVC times. The only thing Tony gets right is the movement of the East Indian people. But he does not seem to mention that in prominence probably betraying the age-old practice of the old India neglecting the East. The new India is looking East. So now with three out of the four basic premises of the book discredited, it is up to you as to how much you would want to believe from this book. The manner of this book, the way it is written, does not allow itself to be considered fiction. So it would rather go down in history as a misinformed book that ran its course within one year of its release and probably make Tony feel why he wrote such a book with ill-concocted data and assumptions. 